Python supports a data type called a tuple, and sometimes it's also pronounced tuple, and I apologize in advance, you'll probably hear me switching off between the two pronunciations. Tuples exist to group together related values. For example, uh, we might have the x, y, z coordinates of points in 3D space, or we could have name and age pairs, like uh, Bob's age is 19 and Jane's age is 23. This is distinctly different from lists or sets. In uh, either of those two there, we could have a, a list or a set of values, like we could have employees here are Bob, Jane, Sue, and Peter. And we can certainly say that Bob is an employee and Jane's an employee, Sue and Peter are also both employees, but among them there's no real relationship between them. You know, Bob is not necessarily related to Peter and Sue's name is not related to Jane, but as a whole they're all employees. They're independent, however. Um, with with a, a tuple, we can definitely say that Bob's age is 19 and Jane's age is 23. So Jane and 23 go together. They're related to each other. And same thing with Bob and 19. Uh, with these x, y, z coordinates, you know, these these all relate to each other because they all represent the x, y, z coordinates of a, a single point. <coughs> tuples can hold any number of values. We see here, here's a tuple that holds three values and here's one that holds two. But you can't add or remove any elements from a tuple. So you can't make a two element tuple suddenly make it become a three element tuple. They are however ordered. There's very definitely a first element, second element, and so forth. And tuples are immutable. That is you can't change the values of the elements. So once I make a tuple call that, that has the values Bob and 19, I can't then change Bob's age to 20. <clears throat> I have to make a new tuple. <clears throat> so let's see how we write tuples in, in Python. You do that by putting them inside parentheses, just like I showed you in those examples. So we could have a, t a tuple of 4, 5, and its values are 4 and 5. We can have Bob and 19. There's Bob and 19. We can assign them to variables. So I could say A is equal to 4 and 5. B is equal to Bob and 19. And I can say the value of A is 4 and 5. The value of B is Bob and 19. I can look at the individual values, like I can say the first element of A is 4, the second element, a is, uh, second element of A is 1, the um, first element of B is 0, and the second element is 1, but I can't change them. If I try to change Bob's age to 20, oops, let's try that again, Bob's age is 20, yeah, we get an error here saying that tuples don't support item assignments. We can't change them, uh, nor can I even add anything on to them. So let's say, let's try to put uh, 6 onto the end of A, and it says can't do that either. So that's what I mean by when I say tuples are immutable. You can't change them once you define them. I can, I can reassign the variable, but that's making a brand new tuple and assigning it to A rather than altering the existing one. So what are tuples used for? They don't, they don't seem that useful. Well, um, one thing that they're, they're used all the time, and you've seen them over and over again when you do programming in Python, is that's when you pass parameters into a function. Um, the, for example, it, the, you've probably seen me talk about this function called range, and that's in which I pass in two numbers. The first number is the first number in the range, and the second number is uh, not quite the last number in the range, and this gives me a range from 4 to 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, but this uh, is a tuple here. You know, it's got two values. The first one is 4, the second one is 10. The, the values are related to each other. You know, the, the 4 goes with the 10. Uh, where I can't exchange the ordering, so the ordering definitely matters. 4 is the first one and 10 is the second one. It's a tuple. Um, tuples are also used at to return values from a function. Now this is something that most other programming languages can't do, like Java and C, they can't do this. You can't have a function return more than one value. Um, so here, here's an example. You know about divide by, you know about modulo. Let me just uh, refresh if you don't. 
So 37 divided by 5, this is the integer division in which I'm throwing away the decimal value here. So 37 divided by 5, the quotient is 7. 37 modulo 5 is the remainder. So remember from probably grade school, you did 37 divided by 5 is 7, remainder 2. Well, Python has a function built in called divmod that gives you both those answers at, at the same time. So if you, if you need both answers, you need the 7 and the 2, you don't need to do the calculation separately. You can use divmod, and it will return both answers as a tuple. So yeah, it looks like a tuple there. It's in parentheses. It's got our first value and a second value. The first value represents the quotient. The second value represents the remainder. So like Java and C, they can sort of do that. They could return maybe both those values tucked into an array. But that's not the quite the same thing because here's what you can do with this. Uh, in, in Python, I can assign both those return values, that sent to separately into individual variables as a tuple. So I can do something like this. So I've got the variables Q and R is the result of dividing and remaindering 37 and 5. And so that number 7 has gone into Q, and that number 2 has gone into R. Let's, let's check it out here. So if I go, the value of Q is ah, 7, and the value of R is 2. That's something Java and C can't do. Anyway, so check out my other videos for sets and lists, and you'll learn more about how tuples relate to, in particular, sets. Thanks for watching.